Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing, everybody? You just letting folks in right now. Hope everybody had a great day and are ready to learn about unity. I'm just letting folks in right now from the waiting room. Thank you guys for being on time. We really appreciate it. Uh, we get started in about one minute. Hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get started. I know we started just a couple of minutes late. We just want to make sure everything was ready to go. It looks like we still have some folks trickling in. That's awesome. I'm happy to see all these faces. Hope y'all feeling the, the sounds of the whispers. They always get me going. Hope y'all brought some energy, ready to ask some good questions. All that good yeah. stuff. Yes. All right, then 30 seconds, 30 seconds more. Just want to make sure we have everybody in, or a majority of folks in, uh, before we get started. And it looks like folks are coming in by the minute. Miss Griffin, Miss Brookins, I'm gonna make you guys co-host. Uh, just in case, no pressure, no actions I don't need. Just in case. And on that note, I think we will get started. So shout out to you guys for being here. And let's do it. I have a quick poll for you guys. Uh, what makes a middle school great? So you will see the poll launch on your screen, whether you're on the phone or on your laptop. If you could just quickly respond to the question, we got about one minute. Uh, what makes a middle school great? Is it caring teachers, extracurricular activities, strong academics, other students, small class sizes? Let us know uh, by your poll response. Okay, looks like Karen Teachers has taken the lead to start. Karen Teachers, yeah. Still waiting for a couple more voices. I got like 16 out of 19. I'd love to get 100%. But it definitely looks like Karen Teachers is taking the lead uh, with extracurriculars and strong academics in a close second. All right, uh, we can end the poll there. Thank you guys for participating uh, in that little activity. Cool. So with that being said, and as the alarm goes off, that's like a perfect, oh, sorry. It's like a perfect segue into uh, Principal Burns. So Principal Burns is gonna talk about how Unity Prep incorporates all of these great things and more. Principal Burns, the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Casey Burns. I'm the co-principal of Culture and Operations. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a co-principal model, which means we have a principal who's focused on the academics and instruction and another principal working on culture and operations, which is um, one of the ways that we work as a school to kind of define some of the leadership roles that, that we have at Unity. And um, you know, before we even get started, I, again, I want to thank you for being here. I know people are busy and they have other commitments and, and, and things going on in their lives, but um, speaking for myself, this is one of the things that I think is one of the greatest honors of working in a school is the opportunity to meet with prospective parents and families. It's just something that um, reminds me of how much um, I appreciate the, the people who I work with, the community I work with, um, just the opportunity to meet new faces and names and know that um, a school um, is nothing without its parents, its families, its students, and its staff. Um, and so you guys are really the lifeblood of our school. And so just appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about unity. I think we're really um, committed as a school to giving you the best possible picture of who we are before you join so that you can um, know what we're about. And that's really what um, tonight is about. So thank you for being here. 
Uh, again, for those who don't know, um, we're a 6 to 12 tuition-free public charter school based in Brooklyn. Our middle school is in bed -Stuy. Our high school is in Williamsburg. Um, we opened up in the fall of 2013 with just 138 sixth graders. And now um, it's kind of surreal to think about the fact that a lot of our kids are now um, off in college and um, um, we continue to bring in our sixth graders and you guys are the, the newest member of the Unity family and community. So welcome. Our mission, um, this is a statement that we use to kind of capture what we're about, the essence of our school. Our mission is to empower students as scholars and citizens so that they may lead fulfilling academic, personal, and professional lives. And one of the reasons why that's so important is because um, as students, clearly you're here to learn, right? In a school, you learn things and you you, you gain information. But more than that, um, our job is to really fulfill you as people, to make sure that you go on to live the kind of lives that you want to live, that you have the opportunity to join whatever profession um, speaks to you, that you learn things, but also that you get developed as a whole human being. So that's incredibly important. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the logistics and some of the, the details that um, are important to anybody who is thinking about joining a school. Um, our school day runs on the following schedule. We have longer school days on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and we have half days on Wednesdays. So the reason why we do that is because it allows for a little bit of a break in the week. It allows for students to be able to um, take time to um, have an earlier day midweek. It allows for us as a staff to get together to talk, to have grade level meetings and department meetings, um, to do professional development and things of that sort. So kids come in every morning, regardless of whether it's a longer day or one of our short days, they have breakfast. We have advisory in the morning, which allows kids to get settled. Um, we have a break mid morning for kids to have some kind of snack. We provide a snack for them where they can bring their own. And um, the school day kind of progresses from there. We have lunch and recess on our longer days, just afternoon. And we have um, two periods after lunch or one if you're in eighth grade, followed by what's called reflection, which is a time when teachers meet with students um, as they need to, maybe to discuss something and maybe something happened during the school day that they need to um, catch up with a student about, or maybe there's some work to finish. Um, and then we have athletics and clubs at the end of the day. So that's our schedule. Again, Wednesday is a little bit different, but in essence, all your classes you see all across the week and, and the schedule similar, just a little bit shorter on Wednesday. So some of the key elements I want to talk about, some of the things that are just really important to us in terms of our model in our school. And one of them is that we have a college preparatory curriculum. So obviously, um, as a school, our goal is to make sure our kids are prepared to go on to college. We want them to be very um, steeped in liberal arts and sciences, to have critical thinking skills. We want to make sure we have a pathway for them. We allow them to um, experience high school level content at the middle school and high school and college level content at the high school. Uh, we want to make sure our teachers are, are, um, are experts in what they do, right? Our teachers are what makes the school um, really run. And obviously, as we said in the poll, um, caring teachers, informed teachers, excellent teachers that will make a good school. So we want our teachers to be experts. We want to create a career path to uh, retain our teachers and keep them here so they can build relationships and, and, and develop over the long term. More time for learning. We have a longer school day, longer school year. We have opportunities on the weekend. And that adds up to about 20% more academic time in academic and co-curricular activities. Um, we've really focused on customized support for the students who are joining us. We have a really heavy um, investment in, in, in um, intervention, which is, allows us to really work with kids at whatever level they're on. It may be small group. It could be one-to-one. -one, um, but we want to make sure that we have settings for kids to learn in the way that they they need to, um, and that also includes co-taught classrooms in the majority of our classrooms, so that kids have um, frequent opportunities to ask questions and be supported academically. Special education is obviously very important for us um, that we're serving the whole suite of, um, or providing the whole suite of services for our kids. So we have ICT classes, we have sets um, in either push in or pull out um, formats, and we have mandated counseling. You're going to hear from one of our social workers in just a moment, but we're very lucky to have two social workers on staff and as well as a, a social work intern and all the other uh, services that we provide as well, um, as, as you can see on the screen. A positive and supportive school culture, incredibly important. Middle school is a very important time developmentally. We want to make sure that we're supporting our kids, that we're creating opportunities for joy and excitement, um, that we're celebrating our kids. Um, and also, we're really helping them understand 
the way to which that their behavior um, is is you know in, important to the larger community, right? We want to make sure that our culture we're looking holistically at our kids. How are we interacting with one another? How are we supporting one another? Um, how are we helping kids learn from their mistakes and so on? And finally, community involvement um, as sort of an extension of that, right? Our community is critically important to who we are as a school. And so we'll talk a little bit in a few moments about some of the ways in which we engage with our community and the larger um, city around us. So some of those cultural opportunities, um, Hallows Fest is here, you can see. Um, character Day is another day we allow kids to come in um, and dress um, as their favorite character from a book. We have very frequent spirit weeks where kids can dress up according to themes and do different activities, competitions, et cetera. These are some things that are just meant to have kids excited about coming to school and seeing um, their friends and their teachers in, in, in fun, exciting ways. Some of the other examples of Spirit Week, we have um, a couple of examples of, of dress down themes there. Um, a Winter Wonderland showcase, something that we did was like a talent show. Again, opportunities just for kids to see school as a place that can be exciting and fun as well as rigorous and academic. Field trips are incredibly important. Um, I think coming out of COVID and some of the restrictions, we see that there's a lot of um, desire on our staff's part and our students' part to get out there and see things in New York City. So here are just some of the trips that we've done this year um, to try to engage our kids and, and expose them to things outside of our four walls. We also had a day called Love Your Neighbor Day, which is a, a form of our community service. Um, we did this at the end of December, right before our winter break. We had a toy drive, toilet you drive, food drive. Um, we had kids going to do service programs with City Meals on Wheels, delivering food, or going to Little Essentials, which is a, um, an organization that provides materials and support for new mothers and young families. We had kids writing letters to people um, in what are called angel cards and letter writing campaigns, just a whole host of opportunities for our kids to, um, you know, think about them, think about others, not just themselves, and really get into that spirit of, of being community oriented and community minded. And clubs are another part of this too. Um, we have clubs through St. Nick's, which you'll hear about in just a moment. We also have some internal clubs as well, um, including a Nintendo Switch Club, um, Woke, Women of Knowledge and Empowerment, and an animation club as well. And we're planning on doing another round of clubs in the spring as well, in addition to what you're seeing um, in after school. And finally, core values, I think, are really important for us, um, for our school, to acknowledge and, and um, appreciate kids who really are going above and beyond. We have a program. They can earn core value shout out points. They can use that in, say, a core value auction, or they can earn certain privileges, like having dress down every Monday. We also do incentive trips for kids who are leading the way with uh, core value points. So again, just to make school fun and also make um, kids aware of the fact that we appreciate them and what they do, that they're seen and appreciated uh, on a daily basis. So I want to shift gears a little bit, talk about some academics. Um, our proficiency rates in 2019, so the, the, the period before the pandemic, um, really we've had our highest in seven years of operation. So really proud of the fact that over year over year in both math and ELA since inception, our results have improved um, in both subject areas. I know as of this last year, we saw a slight change um, in our scores. I think this is a little bit of a function of some of the effects of the pandemic, um, but the 22 um, scores versus 2019, they mirror some of the things that are going on in the city. There were some gains in ELA and there was a drop in math. Um, but our state, our, our state test results are competitive with District 13. That's our district of location. Um, so for those who don't know, our building is in District 13, therefore it's our district of location. But we also have District 16, which is our most heavily represented district um, for our students. And so we tend to compare our data both towards uh, 13 as well as 16. And we're happy to say that we outperformed both District 13 and 16 among students classified as economically disadvantaged. Eighth grade um, Regents is very important to us as a school. For those who don't know, you can take Regents courses in middle school at Unity. So our eighth graders, um, in, in all the years that we've done it, 84% of our eighth graders overall have passed the annual Regents exam. And in 2019, 2020, and 2021, um, there was 100% proficiency. And from 2019 to 2022, overall 83% of our eighth graders enrolled in earth science and passed the annual Regents exam. And the good thing about that is it allows kids to see that they can get accelerated learning opportunities in high school and middle school that allows them to get high school credit before they even leave our middle school as eighth graders. 
So talking about dress code, I think it's an important thing that you think about um, when you talk about any school is just as an opportunity for kids to know um, what is what does it mean to come dressed um, as a student at Unity? And we want to give kids choice. So we give kids uh, what's called a dress code, not a uniform in the sense that they can pick from a variety of options. Um, they can choose their own footwear. They can pick from different kinds of uniform bottoms and tops. Um, and we're constantly adding new options for kids just to kind of keep it exciting for kids, but also having them look their best as they're at school and learning. We also have a dress code for dance and PE. For those who don't know, we have an opportunity uh, as kids come here to choose between dance and PE. So if you're more of a dance person, you can do that instead of doing physical education, um, or you can choose PE instead, or you can even switch from one year to the next. So we want our kids to, again, have as many options and experiences as possible. So just talking a little bit about athletics, um, as you can see, from what's up here, um, we have a variety of sports opportunities for students and athletic options. I think that's one of the things that Unity offers um, that you're just not going to find in other places is the, the, the sheer variety of um, opportunities. We have three seasons. We have a variety of sports. Um, we have sports for both boys and girls. We have sports that are integrated. Um, just a whole host of opportunities for our kids to get involved athletically. And um, Mr. Coleman, athletic director, someone who um, really has done an amazing job of building up our athletic program and really giving kids a chance to try athletics and also to excel in athletics, um, regardless of their level of, of experience or interest. Some of the things I'd say we'd highlight um, in terms of um, athletics, if you like sports, we had student staff games in the Barclays Center. We've had them in um, MetLife Stadium. So we've played in professional arenas with our kids. Um, it's a great opportunity. Something happened, uh, a game happened last weekend where our kids had the opportunity to play in the Barclays Center against their staff. Um, we have you know, cheerleaders performing. We have kids um, selling tickets to benefit the program. So just an opportunity for kids to really um, play on a, on, a, on a scale like that is something that you just don't see very often. And it's exciting for us, exciting for our staff and our kids too. The school bus, I know I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions about this. As you can see, we have two bus routes um, that really allow for a number of um, our students to get to school in the morning, and it really makes it easier for them. Um, so we'll be able to answer specific questions about that a little later on. But as you can see, there's a whole variety of places um, where you can pick up the bus, and it does really allow us to serve a number of communities that otherwise might not be able to, to come to Unity. And I think it's something that makes um, us feel like we're doing right by our kids and allowing this option in, in this kind of uh, transportation. So thinking about high school and beyond, um, our goal is to prepare our kids as middle schoolers for high school and for high schoolers to prepare them for college. And so as you can see from um, the slide, advanced prep events, placement courses um, are really a part of what we do. And um, that's one of the things I think that we're proud of, but also the fact that as of um, our graduating classes, 98% of our high schoolers um, have graduated on time and 100% of our students were accepted to college. And so that's something that, again, I think is a real metric for us in saying, how are we doing in preparing our kids for the long term? And, and that's really important. Taking steps forward in this moment, since at least with us, it's very, in many cases, you all should be extremely proud, maybe a bit nervous, I'm a little nervous, um, but also confident because you guys kill it and you're amazing people and we are proud of you. Uni only 
So just want to talk briefly um, about the process for our um, rising sixth graders, right? Our new students um, coming next year. So we have an, a, a, a lottery that happens in April. And what happens then is that for all the applicants, um, there's a, a randomized lottery, right? There is a preference for certain um, you know, types of students in terms of like a sibling preference or for students who may be um, residing in certain areas. But by and large, it's a completely randomized lottery. We would reach out to you and inform you, let you know where you stand, whether you have a seat or whether you will be on the waiting list. And we try to work through that as quickly as possible. Um, during the summer, we will have an event, some form of orientation or enrichment where we get together, get to meet teachers and staff, um, get some sense of what's coming in the year ahead. And then late summer um, or September 2023 would be the first day of school. So um, that's the sort of timeline that we're dealing with. We want to talk about some of the aspects of the school as well. Um, if you have questions, we want to make sure we leave time for that at the end. I promise you that you won't leave tonight without getting your question answered. But um, we do want to pivot and talk about a number of other aspects of the school as well. So um, please, you know, keep your questions for the end, or you can pose them in the chat, and we'll make sure we get to you before we close out tonight. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Principal Burns. Uh, super well said. Thank you for just giving us a very sound overview of Unity Prep. Uh, now, Dean Griffin, are you here as well? Yes, I am. Hey, how Ooh. you doing? Hi, hello everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, sorry about that. I'm just actually leaving the school building. Um, since I am the um coordinator for Woke, our Women of the Knowledge and Empowerment Club, um, which is consists of a lot of our young ladies from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, so I'm the seventh grade dean. I was formerly the eighth grade dean and also formerly was the eighth grade history teacher. So I know a, a lot about unity as far as when it comes to academics and also our restorative approach to that and our discipline system. Um, and the best way to keep our parents in tune to what's happening with their child in school is by using a system by the name of Jupiter. Um, and I know Mr. Burns touched on uh, the core values. We also keep that there. And then parent outreach. As a dean, this is one of our major things to make sure that we keep parents in the loop about what is happening with their scholar within the building. Um, also, along with that, you'll have academic reports um, weekly. And here at Unity, we believe in having a restorative approach to resolving conflicts and preventing harm. This year, we just launched our peer mediation program, which I'm the coordinator for as well. And we want to give children the um, idea that conflict is not always a negative con um, consequence. We can find ways to actually resolve it from within before we have to get you guys involved. So it's a lesson all within its own here at Unity. Um, we are very impactful on our students as far as making them think first before they react and also filling in with reality and what it looks like outside of this building to ensure that they are well equipped to handle the outside world. So as I mentioned before, Jupiter, I know parents love to be informed. This is going to be your go-to system. And Jupiter, you will have access to grades. You can reach out to teachers, email, the principal, co-principals, um, it is a good resource to have. Your kid, if they're telling you that there's no homework, you will actually see their percentage in homework, assessments, classwork, you name it. This screen here is where you'll see the message board where you'll receive urgent responses with up to 24 hours. Some teachers hit you right away. 
Some teachers use Jupiter a lot. Others like to have you on speed dial, like I, I do. I have a lot of parents where I'm like, hey, I'm going to shoot you a text. And I just want to say I appreciate Unity parents because they are always so responsive when we call. A teacher, a dean, a co-principal. This is what I love about Unity the most and the parents because you guys, because of the parents that we have there at the school, they make everything much more easier because we're working as a team. This is an example of what you can see as far as on your Jupyter dashboard. Here you'll notice that the missing is in red and bold. So if your child is telling you they're miss they're doing all their work, no, 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 no. You always have access to see that actual percentage of what it is that they're filling in in that class. Now, a good thing about Unity is we try to keep a balance between assessment, classwork, participation, and homework. So for any reason, if you have a doubt or want to question or ask the, you ask the teacher what's going on with your student, we always make sure we keep our receipts. That is our best thing. And if a student comes up with the idea that we're not there, we're on a unified front. You get the paper receipts. We're here to talk about it and break it down for you, which makes it even more easier when we have parent-teacher conference. We get to talk about it. Next up. Unity, since the pandemic, has done a fantastic job with keeping up with technology and the resources. Our resources that we use are Google Classroom. Um, we also use Freckle um, and some other resources. And Google Classroom, you'll notice that a lot of teachers are posting a lot of the assignments on there. So if a child, if for any reason, is out missing any work, a lot of our teachers have took into, taken to that as a way to make sure work is accessible and they can go ahead and complete assignments. Now, you'll see, um, you'll know the difference between what incomplete assignment looks like versus a completed assignment. There's one that's on the right of the screen and then the other one that's going to show up on the left. You have access to see teachers' comments. If a student is saying they don't understand, they can always highlight it, send the teacher a message saying, I don't understand what this means. Teacher usually, again, get back within 24 hours. Some teachers get back right in the moment because we believe in keeping up with the grading system. And these are just some more examples of different tools that we use, how we are setting kids up for success to actually be able to better themselves in writing. Um, and also making sure that they have a thorough explanation of what is expected in them in the classroom. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. No problem. Look forward no, to was, seeing you guys. Yes, that was a super uh, thorough response. Uh, Jupiter is our probably one of the greatest tools available to us at the school. It will become your best friend uh, once you enroll at Unity. So don't take uh, Ms. Griffin's explanation lightly. Uh, those things will become your day-to-day -day resources. And then uh, just beyond that, our restorative approach is really embedded in everything we do. So thank you, Ms. Griffin, for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on the call. Um, next up, we have Ms. Brookins. Ms. Brookins, are you here? I'm here. Hey. Hello. Good evening, parents. Um, my name is Clarissa Brookins. I'm one of the school social workers here at, at Unity. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the services that we offer to students. Um, and just to give a little bit of background about who we are. Um, so our department is a pretty small department, but we're very dedicated. Um, so our director of social work is Tina Del Pregasorio. Um, I believe she's been with Unity for about nine or 10 years now. Um, she is primarily on site at the high school though, but she oversees both the middle school and the high school. Um, and then specifically at the middle school, there is myself. Um, this is my fifth year here at Uni uh, Unity. And then we have a senior social worker, Otelia Rivera, who has been at Unity for six years. Um, we do hope that as we continue on and move forward as a department, we are able to bring on a graduate uh, social work intern. We have our first one this year. Um, and it's just been so awesome to have Ms. Wu because having her here means that we're able to service even more students than if it than in prior years when it was just Ms. Viveta and myself. Okay, so we do so many things, but um, the most important things as it pertains to our students 
It's just ensuring that the social emotional development and mental health needs of all our scholars are well supported. Um, so what that looks like is we conduct mental health assessments. We provide individual and group counseling to students who have um, it indicated on their IEP. We also um, provide these services to students who are considered at risk. So at risk are students who don't have IEPs with counseling. Um, at risk students are also students who are experiencing any form of trauma or outside stressors that are impeding on their ability to succeed in school. Um, another important one is that we provide crisis interventions specifically for situations surrounding suicidal ideation and self-harm. Um, that does come up a lot, especially after the pandemic. Um, the number of students that have expressed suicidal ideation or who are self-harming has just increased. Um, the pandemic has definitely like ha had taken its toll on our students. Um, so a lot of crisis and then also cultivating community and healing spaces to address issues like racial violence, xenophobia, et cetera. Um, so as we all know, our students have lived through the height of Black Lives Matter. Um, they're also um, hearing about school shootings and all of these things have an impact on them. So we do our best to stay on top of like what is happening in the world um, and making sure that we are providing spaces for them where they can process this um, and you know feel like they are supported not only at home but at school and that there are resources so that they can move forward. Okay, and then I just wanted to offer some support and resources to um, parents. So one of the biggest things that I always get asked um, from parents is like, you know, what can we do to support our kids and ready them for middle school and beyond? And the biggest thing is just um, our kids have a really difficult time in emotional regulation. So like when they're upset, it's hard for them to calm down. Um, it's hard for them to sue themselves. So the things that we can do as adults is just validate their emotions, um, bringing calm into our homes, bringing um, calm into school, um, also modeling calming strategies for them. Because oftentimes like our kids do know how to like calm themselves down, but they don't realize that the ways in which we calm ourselves down are called calming strategies or coping skills. Um, increasing joys in the little moments, and then also focusing on attunement as opposed to compliance and teaching. So what this means is that, you know, when, when, our, when our kids are having tantrums or they're upset or they're just emotionally heightened, um, as opposed to trying to like teach them a lesson or chastise them in those moments, um, focus on what they are trying to convey to us with those emotions, and then let the teaching and compliance be secondary to that. And then last, I just kind of wanted to share like what what some of the, um, what some of the coping skills uh, students are learning at Unity. Um, so a popular one is stop S T O P. Um, so this is for things like let's say just using a, an example. Um, I have like a student who's like if someone says anything to me wrong, I'm gonna go off on them. If someone hits me, I'm gonna hit them back. And so we often like talk about stop. And so S is just stop, freeze, pause your words, pause your movements. T, take a step back, take a deep breath, move away from the situation, breathe through your nose and out through your mouth to calm your brain and your body down. O is to observe like what emotions are coming up for you. How does your body feel? And then P, plan to not make things worse. So kids don't have to do all of this. They don't have to do S-T-O-P. Um, a lot of our kids at Unity will do S or they'll do T and then they'll keep it pushing. Um, and that's okay. Um, they're it's not meant for them to be perfect or to change overnight. They're still developing. But if they can even do this once or twice, it puts them on the right track to learn how to emotionally regulate so that they have that skill as they get older. Um, and something I always tell them is like, you know, when you get... When you get older and when you have a job, like, and someone upsets you, you can't just pop off or punch someone or you're going to lose your job. So these are skills that you have to build now and getting into practice and doing these things now will be so much easier as you get older. Um, and it's actually pretty popular um, amongst our students. And so 
just wanted to share that because I know parents are always acting like, well, what are some things that we can do um, to support our kids at home? What are some things that we can teach them? And I just wanted to offer that. Phenomenal. Thank you, Ms. Brookins. Um, as you can see, guests, she has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to uh, social work and working with our children. Um, so I really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate you being on staff. Our kids need you. So know that you are appreciated all the time. And on that note, we're gonna get to hear from a Unity Scholar. I think that's a perfect segue. Uh, Miss Robinson and Ty Jean, are you here? Yeah. Hey, Ty Jean, how's it going? Going good. Good, is mom there too? I see her name um, in the participants list. Ty Jean? Yeah. Is mom there with you too? Uh, I see her. I think she's on mute. Oh. I'm right here. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so the mom and son do. I wanted to make sure we got you both on before we started. Uh, so I always think it's important during uh, open house to hear from parents and students, the people that we serve each and every day, um, and people who are in similar positions to the prospective families that are on the call with us tonight. Uh, so I just thank you guys for taking the time out to join us because I do think that you add a lot of value to the community. Um, and without further ado, I guess I'll jump right in with some questions. All right, so this is for Ms. Robinson. Uh, why did you choose to send your child to Unity Prep? Um, when I went to the open house, I liked it, the things that they represented. I liked it the way that they presented themselves. Mm -hmm. And I liked it the things that the um, past students and parents had to say about the school. Nice. Perfect. Well said. Um, Tajin, this is for you now. How have you grown since joining Unity Prep? So, like, I've, jo I've grown, like, academically because the like the regents course and like the previous years before the regents course kind of like helped me really prepare like for the regents course because we the some of the stuff that we did learn in previous years at unity like sixth and seventh grade we do bring them up during the regents or regents courses so and I've also grown like you know I became more mature I guess in a certain way. So uh, that's a great answer. Talk to me a little bit about the transition Taijin from elementary to middle school. So, um, well, uh, so basically like the transfer, it was like, it was different because we went from online to in-person, but like the experience is like, how do I really word this? Like the experience is more, I don't want to, like, I don't really know how to word it, but like, I guess you could say that like the transition is like better and good, so. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. All right, so now for Miss Robinson. Uh, actually, this is for both of you guys. Let's put it for both. What is your favorite aspect of Unity Prep? What's your favorite thing about Unity Prep? Oh, for me, as a parent, mm -hmm. I love Jupiter. Jupiter? Yes. <laughs> talk, talk to the <laughs> families about how you utilize Jupiter. I like to, I, I mean, it's, just, it's kind of like you write in class with your child. That's what I like about Jupiter. Um, it's like you're really in the class with your child. You know everything that they're doing right away. You know if they're missing homework. You know what they're what what aspect are they lower in and higher in? If it's homework or classwork, mm -hmm. um, you can reach out to anyone in the school right through Jupiter. Even if one teacher is not in, you can reach out to another teacher, the principal. Everything I just love Jupiter because, like I said, it makes me feel like I'm right in class. Um, even if you miss one email, you guys send out enough emails that, and all of the emails are attached to your child, so it's not like, oh, I have to find a specific email to get their grades or see what they're missing. Any email you can just log right into your child's account. I love that. Fantastic. And Taijin, same question. What is your favorite aspect of Unity Prep? My favorite aspect about Unity Prep is the way that teachers treat others 
because it's not like teachers show favoritism towards any students or they show like more respect towards others. They treat everybody with the same type of respect. Mm-hmm. No, fantastic. And that, that's actually pretty mature insight from you, Tajin. I'm, I'm happy you said that. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, yeah. And I love that my kid loves going to school. Sometimes he's staying after school even yes. longer <laughs> to help teachers. And I'm like, you're not ready to come home. I'm helping this teacher. I'm helping that teacher. Unity is a great school to any parent. It's really good. All right. Fantastic. I got two more questions, one for each. So, Mom, Miss Robinson, what is the best advice you could give to an incoming caregiver? who may be joining you. Just trust the process. Trust that it's a big transition from for our children from pub, I mean from elementary school to junior high school. And my child transitioned during the pandemic and he still excelled. He still learned. The teachers still show that they care. I had I had a lot of my friend parents who said the teachers don't even be up there themselves. They don't even reach out. For me, um it, it, it was just great. Trust the process. Don't be afraid. All the teachers that I've met so far at Unity are like second parents to my kid, and I trust him at Unity. So just trust the process. It's a safe environment, and the teachers truly care about your children. And that's how I feel. They're not just there to get a paycheck. Thank you. And I'm going to definitely let them know you said that, because that's kind of really um, kind words. Ty Jean. Yeah. Question for you now. Um, is there a particular educator or staff member uh, that you've connected with or you feel like pretty close with? Like this is somebody you can talk to? Uh actually I have two. Mm-hmm. I would say Miss Driscoll and Miss Griffin. I'll say those two. Yeah, Miss Griffin, who was just with us earlier, talk to me. Uh what helped you build a strong rapport with them? Like the way that it like it was very easy to like communicate. It was very easy to communicate with these two teachers and it was very easy to express like certain ways that I feel very quickly. Mm. So, yeah. No, thank you. Um, well said. I, I'm just happy to see the, the, the mom and son duo here on the call. So don't mind me if I'm cheesing a little bit, uh, but I really thank you guys for joining us. Um, no problem. Thank you for taking the time out. And Tajin, make sure you have your gear for the game tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. On that note, we're going to transition to our next guest speaker. Mr. Rodriguez, are you here with us? Uh, yes, I am. Hey. Um, so can you talk to the people a little bit about St. Nick's Alliance, our after school program? Uh, for, uh, certain, uh, I just want to, uh, just acknowledge my camera doesn't seem to be working right now, but luckily the picture that I have, I don't think it's misleading. I'm pretty sure I, I still look like this, but how's everybody doing? My name is Luis Rodriguez. I'm the program director for St. Nick's Alliance at Unity Prep. We are a nonprofit organization where in our division of youth and education, we offer, free after-school programming for students within the schools that we service. Um, In our youth and education division at St. Nick's Alliance, our mission, we're on a mission to help young people become lifelong learners and thrive as adults. Our program operations are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, following the school day from 3.30 p.m. to 6 p.m., whereas Wednesdays being the early day, we still have program on that day following the school day from 1.15 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, as we get in towards the uh, times of, you know, daylight savings and it gets darker a lot earlier, sometimes we modify the dismissal period to 5.30 uh, just so that if we have students that are walking home by themselves, uh, they're able to travel um, home while there's still some type of daylight outside. Um, As far as for some of the program activities that we offer in our program, we offer two hours per week of every activity that we have listed here. So we have literacy, which is created by our curriculum writers that are um, hired by St. Nick's Alliance. Uh, We offer social emotional learning, which we get our curriculums from the One Circle Foundations, and they are gender based Uh, leadership. 
leadership activities are actually developed by the group leaders that your children are with every day. Um, whereas the leadership curriculums, the key points and terms for the uh, leadership curriculum are based on DYCD standards, which is our funders. That is the um, Department of Youth and Community Development that they fund our after school program, which makes our program free for any student that is to join. Um, we also have CHOSEN, which stands for Creating Healthy Opportunities Through Sports, Education, and Nutrition. Um, that is more of our recreational time when spaces are made available, such as the gymnasium, or weather is more on our side, and we take the kids outside for a more recreational period. Um, or we will be upstairs and we will engage in uh, several uh, game activities. We have game consoles for the kids to play. We have board games for the kids to play. And on as we're approaching that time of the year where we're getting into like the mock state exams and the actual state exams, on those days it could be pretty uh, intense uh, for our students. So to give them a bit of a break, we'll put on a show, we'll put on a movie for them to just relax and die down after the day. Um, and the last activity that we offer two hours a week is what we call Creative Studios, which is our clubs portion. Uh, what I have listed here is some of the clubs that we have offered in the past from culinary arts, dance, DJ, martial arts, music production, photography, sports and fitness, step, virtual reality, visual arts. And now we're actually starting a band club, a club. Uh, so right now, the five clubs I believe we're offering this trimester is DJing, dance. Uh, we have a new exciting club, which is Drumline. Uh, we have music production. And we are also offering robotics. Um, every trimester, uh, a child is given the opportunity to pick their own clubs. The clubs are not just assigned to the students, so they're able to uh, try something that they probably haven't tried before, which is something we always encourage. Or they go to a talent to, uh, you know, enrich uh, what they've already learned in the past um, and, you know, pretty much master that skill. Um, every trimester, we look to have them try a new club, whereas when they get into the third trimester, they're also given the option to try a third new club or they'd be able to return to a club if we still have it um, that they've attended in the first trimester or the second trimester. Now, as a part of the St. Nick's Alliance Middle School experience, I like to talk about some of the things that we offer pretty much outside of the um, after regular after school schedule, one of them being holiday camp. So holiday camp, we provide all day programming from eight in the morning to six in the afternoon for the winter break, the midwinter break and the spring break. Um, so usually during those breaks, we are also offering trips. A lot of our trips are usually uh based on the the season so um usually i know from the last trip that we took uh for the winter break we took the kids to a spy museum in the city and we also took them on a tour of rockefeller center where they were able to see the tree uh, we took them to the museum of natural history uh, whereas now when we go into the midwinter break we're looking to offer rock climbing ice skating um, as well as many other trips that we've offered in the past. Um, we also do collaborative events with our sister sites in St. Nick's Alliance, which are other Sonic sites that are um, funded by Department of Youth and Community Development. In the past, we have offered um, holiday parties as of pre-COVID. So we've had, we've hosted um, Valentine's Day party, Halloween parties, spring parties, uh, we've had Spring Into Health event that we've actually hosted as of last year, which is a community event. And then lastly, we have our annual Youth Summit, which happens in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, at one of our Beacon Centers, where all of our families from all our middle school sites are invited to enjoy um, workshops along with their kids and their colleagues and their classmates. Um, and they're able to enjoy some good food. Uh, there is a showcase in the afternoon, and we also give out leadership awards. The last part of the St. Nick's Alliance uh, Middle School experience that I actually am very fond of personally is the big trips that we offer, we look to offer every single year. We start off with our Six Flags Fright Fest trip, which is an incentive trip, usually for our first 50 
participants that are to sign up for the program. Uh, we've been getting, you know, this has been a very good strategy to get kids uh, signed up for our program. So good that usually it's our incoming sixth graders that are able to sign up. And next thing you know, the first 40 applications I'll get are all sixth graders. So when that happens, we look to make it a little bit more fair where we offer 15 slots to sixth graders, 15 slots to seventh graders, and 10 slots to eighth graders. Um, so... That is our first incentive trip. We also usually do an annual ski excursion. We take them to upstate New York, where we actually learn to ski. Um, we only do the bunny slopes. We don't we don't go up the mountain. We don't go that far. But it is a new experience uh, where we're taking them out of the city. We're going, you know, like I said, upstate New York, uh, and experience something that I only wish I experienced at their age or even in high school. Um, and then last but not least, we have our leadership retreat. This is a three day, two night camping trip. That is a also is also a collaborative trip with our sister sites. We um, offer this trip to a small group of 25 uh, middle school kids from Unity Prep um, that are also in our program. And we take them to the uh, Frost Valley YMCA. I believe it's in Catskills, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the thing that I just love about this trip and just all of these trips that we do, especially when they're collaborative trips, we're exposing them not to just new experiences, but they're getting this exposure along with students from other schools that are in different neighborhoods and they come from different parts parts of New York City. And they're all sharing these new experiences together. They're all learning together and they're networking, which is something that I would say St. Nick's is very big on. And I would say a way that St. Nick's and Unity Prep pretty much get along because we have that same model and building that pipeline that it's not once they're done with us in middle school or high school, you know, we, we no longer keep up with them. No, we stay connected with our kids throughout life. Um, and, you know, it never stops to provide different experiences and opportunities for them, which is what we're all about. Um, I believe on the next slide, uh, we just have some examples. These are some pictures um, and videos of some of the great experiences and trips that we have offered for some of our kids. Um, we also take them on college tours um, throughout March is our March Madness time. So we usually schedule a college trip every week. Even through the pandemic, we were able to do virtual college tours, which um, mainly our eighth graders are a little bit more exciting, excited about. But we definitely look back to uh, going to in-person college tours because it really gives them that exposure um, to just post-secondary readiness um, and, you know, a uh, different experience, something to look forward to. Um, and I believe that's that's what I have um, for now. No, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, families, you will be, hold on. Yes, families, you'll be hard pressed uh, to find a better after-school director in the city. Um, I've been in education for about 10 years now and I'm telling you, Mr. Rodriguez is doing a phenomenal job. So, Mr. Rodriguez, shout out to you. Uh, keep doing up, keep doing the great work you do. Um, and it's evident in the kids' smiles and the pictures and all their happiness after school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we got two minutes in terms of being strict to time. Uh, as Principal Burns said, we will stick around and answer questions, but we do want to dedicate some time to answering questions. If folks have to leave at the seven o'clock mark. We understand we do want to be respectful of time, but at the same time, we are here to for you guys. We're a service to you guys, and we want to be able to answer your questions. So if folks want to come off mute to ask a question, or you can send us a question directly in the chat, regardless, we're here to respond. Hello, good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you? My name is uh, Mr. Monroe, a prospective parent. And uh, I had a question concerning the safety of the children. Do you guys have metal detectors or anything that, um, like public safety or school safety or anything like that? Principal Burns? Sure. Um, we we uh, are in a building with another school, a, um, we're co-located. Right? So we have school safety on site. And um, that is something that, you know, we have at the, the front door. If you come and visit our school, you'll see that. 
um, just like any other school, we have that um, safety there. We don't have metal detectors. Um, thankfully, um, we don't have, you know, in our experience, we haven't really had a dedicated need for something like that. We've been very fortunate to, um, you know, feel very um, safe in, in our building and with our students. I know that for those of you who, um, you know, may have older children, you may see some buildings that have, um, they're outfitted with either scanners or wands or things like that. And at our high school, um, there have been different degrees of those kind of um, measures in place, either on a short-term basis or, or things like that, but never at a middle school. Um, just because, like I said, we take uh, our safety as a, it's clearly our highest priority, but thankfully we just, we just don't have the, um, the demonstrated need at this point. Well, that's um, great. I appreciate that. Um, it's only due to the light of the six-year-old shooting his teacher, which bring that concern. Even when you're not thinking about it, that's something that's really far out there. So mm -hmm. for that to happen, it's now bringing it to your forefront. So you want to ask those questions as far as safety and other people getting access to the school and our children's safety. For sure. And I appreciate that question because I think it is a it is a strange time. Um, these things are are definitely, you know, on people's minds. And I think we just want to be a credit to our dean team. And one of the reasons why we have um, Ms. Brokins and we have an, um, a, a full social work team, we have a, a three deans for for our middle school. Is that we really want to make sure our our students experience a lot of points of contact with adults who they can confide in, um, people who can mediate things for them, um, voices are, are just trusted people in their lives. And so um, that's. To us, really, the key to a safe community is starting with like building relationships, having trust, um, open communication with parents and families. But certainly, we always um, take any kind of concern like that, um, like seriously. And so, definitely appreciate the question, and happy to talk about that further um, afterwards as well. Well, definitely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. A uh, great question. I seen a hand raised by Lori. Lori, if you want to just come off mute and ask your question. Good evening, how are you? I'm a prospective parent as well. I just had a quick question. Um, I'm having a hard time. I don't see the school itself when I go on the website to actually apply my daughter. Um, when I go to the for the charter school, I don't see Unity come up at all. So I don't know actually how to. Is this on the school school website or school men or? Yeah, that's why I said, can I go actually on the school website to um, apply because yeah. it's not coming up on the charter Coming school. Up. Yeah. Um, it should come up in the comment app for the charter that's school. That's a man. If you're not seeing that, that's okay. You can go directly to our website at unityprep.org and apply there. Or um, tomorrow, I'll be sending a, a follow-up email, a debrief email, with the link, uh, the application link as well. So you'll get the application link in your inbox tomorrow, but you can also just go to the website right now to apply. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, we got a couple questions in the chat. All right. Uh, okay, so one, one parent asks, what is the next step uh, once a parent completes the application for Unity Online? Once you complete the application online, stay connected to us. Um, we're gonna offer opportunities for open houses, school tours, uh, community events that you could potentially engage with just try to stay connected with us. And then on April 1st, we're gonna let all the families know the status of their application and immediately begin enrolling students for the upcoming school year. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, what, would, what would be the transportation for after school? What would be the transportation for after school? Um, I believe this is connected to the Unity bus. So uh, this is a good question. To be very clear, parents, the Unity private school bus, the free bus that we have two routes for, leaves at the end of the regular school day. It's one of the biggest questions we get every year. It leaves at the end of the regular school day. If you would like to part your child to participate in after school programming, you will have to figure out independent travel home. Now, of course, we can provide school metro cars and things of that nature, but just know that the school private bus is not available to the students after the regular, the end of the regular school day. Yep, and I can also drop the application link in the chat. I see somebody asking about the application link. Um, okay, 
Okay, so this is less of a question, more of a statement. Uh, we will be having school visits next week uh, by Cultural Arts Academy and Brooklyn Charter School. Um, so if you want to join one of those school visits, you're more than welcome to join us. It uh, looks like one family member will be adjoining uh, during your school's visits next week. So I'm excited that folks are already aware of that. That's really great. How will parents be contacted or notified on April 1st? Uh, we will send you a message via email and it'll likely be a text message sent as well. Yeah, please, more questions. Uh, this is your time. Are students chosen through a lottery or is it first come first serve? Students are chosen through the lottery. Um, there is some priority um, groups, whether if you have a sibling attending the school or based on where you live, uh, but students are generally selected randomly based on our lottery. Can I just say one thing, uh, Mr. Beckford, as well? Just so for, for um, you know, obviously, if you're applying here and you don't have a sibling or a child in the school, um, this process is, you know, maybe not familiar to you, but one thing we really do, um, I think, work really diligently at is making sure that once the lottery happens, if there's a waiting list and there's 150 people on the waiting list, we really work actively to make sure we go through that waiting list quickly. I mean, and a number of us on this call are parents ourselves. We know this is a very um, significant decision for you. You want to get this information. So we really do make a, a concerted effort to make sure that we're calling people. Hey, are you interested in the seat? If not, um, let us know or respond to let us know so we can, um, you know, move along the waiting list in, ex in an expeditious way. So the whole point of this is, again, to really make sure that those who are interested have the opportunities and those who might not be that we're communicating effectively so that you know, try to make this this process, um, take some of the stress and, and um, delays out of the process to the extent that we can from our end. So um, just hopefully that that's your experience, but I think that we do, again, make those efforts to make sure that that happens. And um, we're there for you along the way. If anything comes up, I mean, I know you will definitely will not um, have any trouble reaching out to us if you have any questions along the way, either, you know, making the application or, or you know, waiting for the lottery, et cetera. So um, definitely appreciate any outreach on, on your part. Yeah, and in that same vein, I just put a link to a G, a Google form version of our application. Um, all of our application data is housed in Schoolmint, but we did make a G form to make it a little more accessible to parents. Um, so you can fill that out. It's pretty easy to fill out there. And I'll get the same information and transfer it into our system. So you can either use a G form or go directly to our website. I found that a lot of families find it easier just to navigate a G form. Uh, do students have to do an interview? No, students do not have to do an interview um, in order to be accepted to Unity Prep. Uh, we are in an open enrollment school. Please, any more questions? Oh. Okay, any more questions? I know we're almost about 10 minutes over, but I do want to make sure we answer every question. Do you have to take a test? No, there's no test to get in either. Um, really, we're just looking for you to apply. Um, and then through our lottery system, we will select students. And then from there, please be active in the enrollment process because as Principal Burns has mentioned, we do move through our wait list very fast. Any more questions? This is your time, families. I know we're over um, the scheduled time, but I still want to make sure that we answer questions. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you guys to get your questions answered. Do you have to pay for after school? After school is absolutely free, free of charge, free 99. Sorry, I do have one more question. Cause I do know I hear there's a, there's, there's a high school connected. Yes. I just wanted to know for safety reads, for safety precautions, how does that go? Do they interact at all? Because that's one of my biggest concerns is one of the biggest people interacting with my child. Uh, so you're in good, you're, you're in luck. Um, Unity Scholars are the biggest kids in the building. Uh, so we're connected with the elementary school at our middle school site. And then we have our own dedicated building for the high school. So we do not share a building for high school. Okay, cool. So, but it, the high school is connected with you guys. So basically after graduation, they could right on over there. Yep. They're automatically guaranteed a seat. That's so cool. 
Hopefully she gets in. I'm excited about this. <laughs> My niece goes there. This is her first time there, and she okay. just spoke nothing but great um, reviews about you guys. No, that's and fantastic. You guys got a good relationship with Cultural Arts Academy, and they always, always talk guys, about this school. Cultural Arts Academy is like, those are our partners in crime. Like We're always working with CAA. Um, it doesn't matter if you accidentally filled out an application twice. No, it doesn't matter. We'll still be able to um, answer your question. I mean, get to your application. Uh, will parents be notified no matter what, no matter the outcome of the application process? Yes, your child will either be placed on a wait list or offered a seat. So you're automatically going to be notified. Um, and then what if you are already enrolled? Do we need to do it again? I'm confused by that question. Um, does your child already go to Unity Prep? If they do, then you're already in. If, uh, so there's difference between applying and just completing an application. Enrollment consists of uh, answering some more general questions, but beyond that, submitting necessary documentation, such as the birth certificate, um, the CH205 health form, uh, proofs of address, report cards, immunization records, things of that nature to actually register um, and enroll in a school. All right, any uh, last questions? I know there was a question around the after school schedule. That's why I went back here. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 3.30 to 6 p.m. He tries to let the kids out a little bit earlier in the, the winter, fall months, because it gets dark early. And then Wednesday on our shorter day, kids start at 1.15 or 4.30. Right. See this one more hand? One more hand? Yeah, please. Uh, the hand raised if you want to come off mute real quick and ask your question, uh, Miss Yvonne. Yes, sir. Good evening. How do you go about the enrollment for the school? You were saying something about um, like report card, immunization cards, and stuff like that. Yep. So we'll be reaching out um, once April and we do our lottery. Once we have uh, offered some students, we're going to reach out to those families for enrollment. And at that time, we'll ask you to do like a brief um, conversation where we ask you some general questions and ask you to submit the necessary documents. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I'm so excited. This is good. No, I feel the excitement from you guys. I'm so excited because my son is coming from CAA. Oh, perfect. And he That's wanted to go to a charter school, CAA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to see you guys next week. Yeah. I'm going to see you guys next week. He's going to see you guys next week. Perfect. So I think that's on that note. Um, that's a perfect segue. We're about 12 minutes over. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any other last questions, just let us know. Otherwise, I think we're about ready to close out. Just I would just say, too, I know we say this every time we do this, but if you have a question that you may not want to pose to the larger group, um, please let us know. Um, you can reach out. Mr. Beckford obviously sends a follow-up message after every awesome. house, um, but feel free to get in touch. If you have a question that might be a more yes. personal or an individual question that you may not want to talk about here, just please let us know. We want to make sure you get all your questions answered so you can, you know, we can tell our students you have to be informed to make a good choice, right? So we feel like the, the same applies to parents and families and want to make sure we, we answer any questions you have. Yep. So do not hesitate to reach out to me. I, I sent a bunch of emails to you guys. Do not be shy to do the same with me. Um, and I will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow. that will have the application link, a recording of this video, as well as a form to sign up for school tours. Um, so if you want to get in the actual building and see what the school is like, uh, we can schedule that. So thank you guys for the time, uh, your energy, the excitement, which is making me feel excited. So I really appreciate it. And on that note, we hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Peace.